Hi everyone and welcome to the next video tutorial. So in this one I'm continuing on with the Black Legion Chaos Lord. Uh, in this video particularly I'm focusing on the uh, brass or gold trim on his armour. Uh, so I'm going to be working with some metallics. So I've done up a little tester. You've noticed his arm is missing, the one with his gun. Uh, so this is kind of the look that we're going for. Um, slightly sort of weathered. Uh, quite a dark gold. Um, so this, I'll, yeah, I'll be applying this to the rest of um, the trim on the model. So to start out with, I did a base coat of a 50-50 mix of Castellax bronze and Retributor armor. Just gives us a nice deep gold sort of tone to start off with. So, and obviously being a base paint, we're um, thinning that to a base in consistency. And um, pretty straightforward. We're just going to apply that to all of the metallic areas. So that's after one coat, just on the shoulder pad there. Um, this is pretty straightforward, so I'm just going to go ahead and um, I'm going to apply the, a second coat um, to all the areas that I go through. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and, and do that now. Okay, so that's that. I've gone through and applied that as a base coat um, with two coats um, to all of the trim area of the model. So the next step is to do a bit of shading. Um, so I'm just using pure Castellax bronze and I've thinned it down to kind of a probably close to a layering consistency. And what I do now is basically kind of glazing but um, it, it goes on a bit heavier than a glaze would. And just pushing it towards areas that are going to see more shadow um, and just lightly building that up. When it comes to shading metallics, sometimes you kind of have to break the rules in terms of where you're going to place your shadows and things like that. Um, metallic surfaces, they don't necessarily, um, you know, the areas that you would, th would think would naturally be falling in shadow um, wouldn't necessarily, you know, be, be darkest as you would imagine for other kinds of surfaces. Metallic surfaces kind of just reflect the environment around them. So what I kind of tend to do is not, not think too much about, um, you know, placing the shadows. There are areas under here, for instance, where I'm just 
I'm, I'm applying that cast sax bronze quite heavily. And um, getting some depth in those areas. But, I mean, if you look at the the version that the the Games Workshop Studio has painted, there are areas in shadow in, in these kinds of areas. They've actually darkened these spots in here. Really, it's about kind of building a visual interest and, um, and just trying to define the the surface of the metallic um, and the key is to kind of try and build a contrast so even though this area here would be receiving a lot of light I've gone and, and placed a shadow in here because I want this bit up here to stand out a bit more. I'm not applying the shade to that area. Um, and then you're kind of alternating your light shade. Then we've got some light areas here, a bit of shading in this spot to make that area stand out a bit more. Um, so it's just kind of sometimes just a matter of playing around with where you place your shadows. Um, just to make it look, you know, more interesting. So, this is, um, it's not, as far as glazing goes, it's not, you know, too slow a process. You could speed things up a bit, um, you know, if you wanted to apply this to a bunch of models for an army or something, um, by thinning thinning it down more and then just applying it in a wash kind of fashion, like you would, you know, apply a, a shade paint, um, and it would naturally. You might need to apply a couple of layers but it should kind of flow to the recesses enough and start to shade it a bit. I find that, yeah, this, this process is quick enough anyway. Um, the paint being in more of kind of a layer consistency is easy to apply. It goes on thick enough to stand out enough. And, um, and is actually surprisingly quick because of that. That's basically it for that, uh, as far as I'm going to go with it. Um, so yeah, as you see, it's not it's not a particularly slow process. Uh, it'll that'll took me around five minutes all up. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is start introducing some darker tones to really push the shadows. All right, so for the next step, I'm actually gonna start using some contrast paints. I've found that the contrast paints are really nice for um, using as glazes, uh, for doing shading and stuff like that. So I'm gonna use some wild wood, uh, and I've actually, I've thinned it down a little bit, so it's roughly two parts of the paint to one part water. 
And with this, we're basically going over what we've already done with those areas where we've applied that bronze and we're just deepening those shadows. Um, you can use it to flow around little details like that. Get the rivets to kind of stand out a bit more. Um, but really, this is pretty straightforward as well. So I'm going to use it to sort of recess shade in there to make those details stand out later. Um, so it's kind of just, yeah, as a matter of strengthening those shadows that we've already um, already applied. It's quite a nice, it's, I kind of compare it to Agrax Earthshade, this one. Just, um, you know, a lot richer, really, which just makes it really nice for using on, on these kinds of metallics. And now I'm going to do probably two, two layers of that. Um, working closer towards the shadow than you did with the previous layer and you start to start to build that layering um, you know slight blend kind of look What happens with this paint as well, because it has a slightly more matte finish to it as well, it really, it starts to dull down the recesses, which is what you want. Typically you'll find, you know, when you look at natural metallic surfaces, the recesses and shadows and things, they, they have a, a lot less shine to them than the actual raised surfaces of the metallic so it sort of helps to simulate that look and um, yeah as I mentioned before it helps to create a contrast in the surface obviously the the more raised surface being more metallic, having more of a shine will stand out more. And then the recesses and the shadows help to sort of push the raised areas forward because they stand out less. All right, well, that's that really. So you can see that's really changed the look of it. Uh, it's, you know, got these the nice rivets, little details like that standing out. Um, we're building even more contrast here so that this nice edge here is standing out. Um, so the next step is actually to push that even further. So I'm actually using another contrast paint um, and that'll be Black Templar. So with this one, I'm thinning it down even more. So it's kind of a an equal parts mix. Um, and once again, what I'm doing is just going over what I've done already. Um, this is going to help to, to push the, um, the very, the really deep recesses. Um, and it helps to give the armor kind of a, a more of a gritty sort of look.
So that's basically it for that. Um, so we're getting a nice, really kind of uh, gritty, strong um, brass look happening. Or gold, if you will. Um, <laughs> so the next stage is just to get a bit more definition into some of the edges. So I'm introducing um, an edge highlight. So we'll go and do that now. So I said edge highlights, but really I'm also gonna be applying some highlights to the surface of the metallic as well. So I'm using Liberator Gold, which should complement this quite nicely. So in continuing with the kind of gritty weathered look that we're going for, um, I'm kind of using a similar approach to the way that I did the armor uh, on the sort of more flat surfaces of the metallic. I'm going to be using the kind of random, almost stippling kind of approach where I'm just gently dabbing the paint on there and kind of for lack of a better word, jiggling <laughs> the bristles on the surface. So I'm also going in and, and giving a nice little edge highlight. Um, I might should point out I've moved over to using a fine detail brush for this for obvious reasons. You probably you might know this little trick, but if you're doing a nice fine edge like this. You want to turn the brush to the side so that just the edge of that shoulder pad will be catching the, um, the flat edge of the bristles. So there's, there are some surfaces that you might not be able to do using the edge of the brush. This little surface here, for instance. because it's um, going to be a bit difficult to get your brush on the right angle to do that. But this, this edge here is another great example of one that's just a lot easier and quicker to, to get with the edge of the brush. So this spot here I want to highlight a bit. So I'm just gently stippling the brush on that surface. And then I'm going to edge highlight these bits. All right, so that's where we're at now. So I used it um, with the fine, tip of the fine brush to also apply some little scratches and things. Um, I always do love doing little scratches <laughs> um, just to really emphasize the kind of weathered look. So the final thing that I want to do, you could leave it at that stage if you wanted. Um, if you're, you know, just going for a tabletop look. But I've also started to apply some very fine 
edge highlights with Stormhost Silver. Uh, just to really push those highlights. Um, get the edges standing out nicely. Um, also, you know, details like the rivets. Um, but, uh, yeah, this, this one does take a little bit of patience getting, um, and a bit of, you know, fine brush control to get the, the really sharp edges, um, using the very edge of, um, the edge of the brush to, to get some of those edges. That's it um, for the metallic trim then. I've applied the Stormhost Silver across all the edges um, and I'm really happy with how it's looking. It's got a nice shine to it. Uh, still having a lot of uh, you know nice depth in the recesses. Gives it a strong, vibrant kind of look. Uh, so... Yeah, once again, Carl, I hope that helps out. I hope that's, um, you know, going to help you to paint yours at home. And anyone else who was interested in learning how to paint um, the black armor uh, from the previous video, uh, but also this metallic brass or gold trim. So, yeah, thanks a lot uh, for your support. I uh, really, really appreciate um any support that I get to uh, help continue to make these videos for you guys uh, to help you improve your painting. So yeah, thanks a lot. Mm -hmm.